Next, we're going to cut these slots. Of course, that's a milling operation. We're going to go to 2D and select 2D contour again. Now, as a default, it's pointing the tool in the same direction as our Z is pointing, because Z is normally the spindle axis. So we're going to have to change the direction of our spindle axis. But first, let's select our tool. For this operation, we're just going to be using a 3 8 flat end mill. Let's go to our geometry. And so you can visualize this better, I'm going to change my tool orientation. I'm going to do a Z selection with an X. And to pick my Z, I simply have to pick this face. Now the Z will be perpendicular to that face. So that's all we need to do to set our orientation. Now we need to select our geometry. So I'm going to pick this edge at the bottom of the slot. Of course, we can adjust our heights. Our bottom height is set to the selected geometry, which is exactly where we want it. Passes, you could do a couple of passes if you wanted to. We're just going to do it as one pass for this example. I would certainly encourage you to play with maybe taking a rough and a finish, or you could just tell it that you wanted to take multiple finish passes and get almost the same results in this case. You may also want to adjust your compensation. I'll set this to wear compensation in case the operator needs to make a fine adjustment to the size of the width of that slot. For our linking parameters, I'm going to adjust some of the lead-in values. I don't need to blend in on a radius. I'll set that to zero with a sweep in at an angle of zero and I'm going to come in at a linear distance of 0.2. That should give me plenty of clearance off the front. And I'm not going to do a vertical lead in either. Now, if you wanted to extend the lead in, another way to do that would be to go to the Passes tab and use the Tangential Fragment Extension Distance. That'll allow you to extend the length of the pass. That should be all we need. Let's OK this. And there's our toolpath to machine one of the four slots. Now, we could go and do the same thing again for the other slots, but there is an easier way. Now, with that contour selected in our tree, the next thing we want to do is to rotate that around the part to create the other three slots. So we'll have a total of four slots. So again, with that toolpath selected, we'll go to Setup and create a new pattern. A pattern duplicates a toolpath. The type of pattern I want to create is a circular pattern. We need to tell it the center axis of the rotation for this circular pattern. And all I have to do is pick this outer cylinder so it knows it's rotating around that cylinder. I could just as easily have picked this hole anything that would be at the center axis of what we're rotating around. If you had a line going through that center, I could also have picked that line. I'm doing a full 360 degree rotation, and I want a total of four slots. You can see it's already shifted that around to the other locations. We're going to do equal spacing, keep the original, and OK. So again, if we want to see what we've got to this point, I can right-click on Setup, go to Simulate, and in this case, I'll just fast-forward to the end, and we can see that that looks pretty good.